wrestling fans, welcome to the One Week Wrestling Podcast, where we help you navigate the complex world of pro wrestling, bring you the best matches, world-class wrestlers, and news you can count on. At One Week Wrestling, we bring the elite to you. My name is Christian and I, and joining me as always is Mr. Bill Cupwish. Bill, how's it going? It is going, it's going, it's cold. It's cold. <laughs> Just got back from a walk and it's cold. I was bundled up like it's winter or something out there and it's only November. Remember we were talking about how warm it was just a couple of weeks ago and now it's freezing outside and it gets dark and it's like, I, I dislike November. Yeah, we got uh, flurries yesterday, right? And, you know, I, I'm always like, you know, I'm I, like when I see the first snowfall, I'm always mesmerized like a child, right? I'm like, oh my God, it's snowing. And then immediately I'm thinking to myself, oh, I got to drive in this I gotta, I gotta go outside and and do that. Uh, yeah, no. So uh, and plus, because the weather change is going crazy, everyone's getting sick. So I mean, like, even I woke up this morning. I'm like, man, why do I feel like someone just beat me up badly? Yeah, <laughs> I kind of like, felt oh, like that this oh, morning too. Like, there's nothing oh. really wrong. I just felt like you know, and I mean, I I felt like I had a hangover without having touched alcohol whatsoever. It was just like, blah. yeah. I, I guess maybe I mean yeah maybe that's the the feeling except I have a sore throat which I don't really get from oh great alcohol, that's that's so. wonderful well we 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 got to get better by the weekend man we got a lot to do I know we, so, we have a busy so. weekend coming up we do very have a busy. very busy weekend and it's busy because of wrestling which is the best kind of busy <laughs> so uh, you know this is a show about wrestling and uh, what we do with this show you know O W W Weekly. This is where you can find the Elite Wrestling Worldwide. We're going to give you some news updates. So there's not much news this week. We're going to talk about, uh, you know, what happened an AEW Roundup with Krishna. I'm going to do my excursion report. We're going to talk about some matches that you might want to check out. And, you know, our Wrestler of the Week and our Match of the Week. So uh, do you want to get into this, Krishna? Let's do it. Okay. Well, in the news, okay. A minor correction. See, for the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about the PWI 500 coming out. And old timer me just assumed that it came out when the magazine comes out. And the magazine comes out in December. I didn't realize, of course, the list had been released in September. My bad. On top of that, I hate to say it, but Krishna was in fact right. So Roman Reigns was the number one wrestler in the world on the PWI 500. Kenny Omega was 16th and Will Ospreay was 27th. And this just goes to show you that this list has absolutely nothing to do with any kind of factual reality whatsoever. It's some WWE fans wet dream of kayfabe and therefore I am done discussing it. Yeah, it's... um. You know, it's it's interesting when you you go through the list and and you see the wrestlers on here, right? I mean, like, listen, we didn't expect Kenny Omega to make it. I didn't even expect him to make it on the the list. Well, maybe the at like at the bottom because he's wrestled two matches, three matches <laughs> this year, um, uh, since since everything happened. So his injury and everything. So I didn't really expect him to be on him on here. I I knew Roman Reign, R- Roman Reigns was going to be on here, but just because you know. It's I'm assuming they're judging by the championship reigns, no pun intended, and anything like that. But so it's probably why, like going through the list, like I mean, Okada, Okada's there. I mean, that's, he's number two. I haven't been paying too much attention to New Japan, so I'm not sure how much Okada has done this year. So that was a little, little interesting. And then going through the list, I mean, I mean, Adam Page. Listen, Adam Page at number four. I was shocked at that. Like that's a good. Listen, Adam Page has put on some really good matches. He always like wrestles his heart out. So I agree with that. Then we have people like Danielson Seven. Okay, he's been doing well. Um, but then you know Mox. You would have seen Mox have been higher. He's at seven on the list this year, right? So it, 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 it's 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 really odd because then you have people like, for example, Adam Cole. Adam Cole's had a good half year right he got injured at forbidden door yeah. that's well, don't, June. don't forget the the list goes from september to september in terms of so 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 it, go, it goes basically from when he appeared in AEW, right till his injury uh yes. in, in june okay so about what was that like uh six nine nine months nine months about about, yeah, about sure. that sure 
but I mean, he's been gone for a while, right? So a, a lot of these things, I'm kind of like, okay. And but you're right, you're you're right. Like, I mean, I really disagree with with the fact that Will Ospreay is 27, right? 27. So he's been nonstop wrestling. <laughs> no, again, no pun intended there. He's been nonstop wrestling, but and and like, was he injured this year? Yeah, he was. Point? Yeah, yeah, he was. He he had a kidney infection that almost killed him that he overcame. And and, and then he just. I guess overcame things, right? Like John Cena, and then decided he was going to wrestle nonstop after that. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because yeah, he because he is Will Ospreay, and he is that effing good. Yeah, I mean, listen, maybe at the end of the year, maybe we need to do our list of oh, we will, we will, we will, right? we will. Um, and obviously, it won't. It'll be majority of like New Japan and 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 AEW. Well, yeah, because but... I don't watch WWE, <laughs> so I mean, there will be a caveat on the list. This will be yeah. your list of wrestlers that we think are that good outside of WWE, unless you want to include WWE wrestlers. You, I'm not. Like, no, I'm, I'm not. I know I'm that you occasionally to. see some I matches. And... Occasionally, but that that I get. I, I'm not equipped to say that i can you know like really judge that because listen roman reigns at number one i told you i can defend it right he's like i and i you're right i have seen some roman reign matches but they're not as good as any of the matches that we that we, that we love like hey it's definitely not my style of wrestling but no. i see it i see it yeah. right yeah. so yeah yeah I, I, we, we don't have to touch on this a long i mean it's 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 the pwi list Obviously, other um, outlets, like we, we said, you know, like uh, um, Fightful Selects doing their own. Uh, I think uh, uh, yeah. Wrestler, Wrestling Observer, right? I think Yeah, yeah. Wrestling does Post Wrestling does their yeah. own as well. Yeah, There's so... going to be a lot of a lot of ones this year. I'll be interested to see what they think and uh, compare ours to it. So You know, the funny thing is that is that today um, in the video game world, they, they announced that they announced, sorry, they announced the video game award nominees. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going through the list and I was looking at it and I thought to myself, there are a lot of like big studio names here. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like I said, I got WWE because this is a lot of like Sony's and Microsoft's and Nintendo's, but the indies, they really never get uh, recognized at all. Like, they, they literally have to create an indie um, uh, award <laughs> to give the mm -hmm. indies something. So, so it's kind of weird that you, it's like, Hey, this game just came out. How is it nominated for game of the year already? Right. Cause you know, is it a recency bias, but you're right. I mean, like what's going to make you money. What's going to promote like, so, so, so I, I disagree with this list. There are some people I'm like, okay, it kind of makes sense, but like, Hey, Hey, rest. This is the, this is uh pro wrestling illustrated Top yep. 500, whatever. But I was a little confused with your analogy. Are you saying that that Fight Forever has been nominated for that list? No, no, oh. no. Fight Forever, Fight Forever is um is uh, not even first of all not even released, and who knows when that game is coming out at this right. point? Okay, right. Cool. Cause, so yeah, cause... so you were just saying that that there's people on this list that you know recency bias may be influencing where they are on the list. Yeah, kind yeah, of exactly. Like for, for, for example, let's okay, say I'm let's say let's say that Sony or someone had put had released the Fight forever game or let's mm -hmm. say let's say for example since we're on wrestling let's say like wwe 2k22 was nominated for uh sports game of the year mm -hmm. like for example madden and stuff are always nominated right? yeah, yeah. kind of like well i mean these are the big names that's why it, it's out here right so I'm, I'm not really surprised with this list i'm i'm kind of like whenever i see these kind of lists released i'm always like okay like if my favorite wrestlers get nominated like for the top spots i'm like okay mm -hmm. great that's cool but it, yeah. but, but then then i then i see this stuff i'm like okay whatever you know yep. <laughs> okay yeah, i know but then all you have to do is spend like 20 minutes on uh, on wrestling twitter and you see the incredible wwe bias <laughs> among know. fans I there know. anyway so it's like some people just never step outside of the bubble but you know yeah. that's just it you people who haven't stepped out of the bubble we're trying to reach you yeah. There is wrestling beyond the WWE bubble that might actually make you go, I've been living in this bubble too long. I need to step outside of it. I mean, it happened to me. Mm -hmm. It happened to you. Yeah. If if you like wrestling, I mean, if you actually enjoy the sport of wrestling, because, hey, maybe you just enjoy WWE. Maybe you enjoy sports entertainment, right? And, and that's fine, you know, enjoy what you want to enjoy. But if you actually enjoy wrestling and, you, you know, you remember, you think you remember the glory days of 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 of, of before and, and uh, you kind of take a step and try to, like, watch something different, I would suggest watching AEW, just, just watching New Japan Wrestling because there's a lot of wrestling that's, that happens around the world 
that's not WWE wrestling, that is fantastic. And when you start yes. watching those things, that's when you realize, wow, right? You're like, yep. it, it, it's what do they call it? Is it they almost call it like the, the beer goggles, right? Yeah, I have my beer goggles on. It's like you, you are watching WWE thinking this is the best. And then you realize, no, this there's this other world outside of WWE. Right? Precisely, precisely. And I mean, I mean, in that vein, support your local indies. You know, they're the ones yep, who could, you, yep, you yep. want. You want to have some fun. Go to a local indie show. I mean, that's exactly what Krishna and I will be doing this weekend when we head out to watch Smash Wrestling here in Toronto at the Rec Room. Um, mm. Smash Wrestling is actually putting on two shows this weekend, one in Toronto, one in London, Ontario this weekend, the 19th and the 20th. It's a uh, Smash Wrestling, which, as I have already known, local Toronto indie, but they wrestle all across Ontario, as far as I'm aware. And they're nice. taking on uh, WXW, which is a German wrestling promotion. So the whole thing is around Smash Wrestling versus WXW. The Forbidden Door? <laughs> Is that it's, what it the, is? it's the German forbidden door. Uh, yeah, so most of the matches are featuring North American talents taking on European talents. Chris and I will be there live in the second row on November the 19th. Nice. Um, and uh, the, I'll give you a quick rundown of the matches now, but uh, later on uh, this week, we will have a quick preview of these matches, what we think, uh, how, the, how we think they sound, a little bit more on who these guys are, that kind of stuff. But for now, we've got Tristan Archer taking on Carter Mason. Alex Tischer, who used to be Alexander Wolf in WWE, taking on Jake something. Now, I didn't forget his last name. His name <laughs> yep, is Jake something. Name. Bobby Guns versus Kevin Bennett. Uh, Kevin Bennett, uh, his claim to fame, he was on AEW Dark Elevation in 2021, where he faced the acclaimed in a tag match. Um, Jake something, by the way, will be in New Japan Strong in two weeks, taking on Juice Robinson. Okay, um, okay. We have an interesting match of Cara Noir with his uh, ballet wrestling gimmick, taking on Psycho <laughs> Mike. Um, we've got a four-way with Matt Cross taking on John Greed, taking on Maggot, taking on Robert Dresker. I think I'm pronouncing his name right. I'll make sure I got it right for our preview. Jody Threat taking on Nikita and CXR, which is Chael Connors and TJ Epic, taking on Halal Beefcake, Idris Abraham and Joe Coleman. And I cannot wait to watch these. It sounds like <laughs> a good card. Yeah, this is, um, this, it, it sounds funny, right? Um, I I don't even know what to think. I, I mean, the one person I do obviously know right away is Psycho Mike. Obviously, mm -hmm. we've seen him before live wrestling with with uh for the OEW uh yeah OWE, OWE. event we went I went to and uh, he was pretty funny there. I've seen some of his his uh his kind of comedy wrestling that he does mm -hmm. online. So I'm very curious to find out how this is. And you know what? I mean, these events are fun. Like when live events are always fun. Like it, it's it's you get to see these these new. I, I'm not even sure if they're up and comers. Like you see, no, these guys, most of these guys the are Toronto, old vets. Yeah, yeah, like the Toronto, the Toronto scene. I did. We didn't even know that there was a Toronto wrestling scene, right? So, you know, seeing these uh, these guys, like uh, this, should be interesting because because you know, I'm I'm always interested. In, I'm like in like you know why why did you choose wrestling right like 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 how did that become a passion for you? Um, were you an athlete? And it's funny. I'm looking through some of these things, and this is guy. I'm gonna assume his name is it's, it's Matt Cross, but he, I, but. It's I don't think it's him because he has like face paint on and then he almost has like the the Jesus Christ like thorns on his head. And I'm like, what is what is this guy? Um, so, yeah, it, it's funny. I, I was just going through the, the pictures here and um, it's going to be a good time. Like I, I am excited. Like we um, we haven't been to a live event in a long time for wrestling. I know I haven't been to a live event for wrestling. The last time we went to was OWE and then OWE, uh, yeah. and then the NXT show after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. We went, we went to yeah, take a takeover. Was it? Yeah, it was. It we was the SummerSlam like weekend takeover back in 2019. Yeah. It was the last yeah. wrestling show we went to. So yeah, so this this will be good. I mean, we did really want to go to the AEW show that was that was here in Toronto, but mm -hmm. obviously you guys heard us rant about that. Um so yeah, I'm 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 excited. I like I again I don't know anything about any of these wrestlers except for Psycho Mike. Like like legit. I'm going there. The only person I know is Psycho Mike, right? Yeah. So so uh yeah it's it's uh it's funny. And and, and all I remember is you remember when we went to the old OWE show and uh it was Psycho Mike and I can't forget the the guy who who um was his tag team partner but uh they're facing off against uh SCU Right. So right. that was the match. Right. Yeah. So I remember that. Um, so I am I am 
very curious um, and and uh, excited for this weekend. That's oh, sure. yeah, this should be a great time. And then we get to watch the pay-per-view right after because they're showing it for free there. If uh, some of you are in the Toronto area and looking for something fun to do wrestling-wise this weekend, check it out. There's still tickets available. Just smashwrestling.com, I think. Um, but you can find them pretty easily. Just Google Smash Wrestling. Um, but yeah, it, it looks like it's going to be a really good time. Alexander Wolf, I'm very familiar with. You're going to like it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, because I saw him a lot on NXT back in the day. He was part of Insanity and then he was part of the Imperium and NXT UK back when I actually used to watch NXT before they blew it up in a giant rainbow flash. Um, okay. Yep. So yeah, that was that's that. But we will have more on these matches a little oh, bit more. Oh, I do recognize Alexander Wolf, Alex, <laughs> T- Alex uh, Tischer. You're right. I do yes. recognize him. Okay. Never yeah. Mind. Yep. Well, there you go. And so uh, we'll have a little more on these later in the week. But uh, for now, that's uh, that's definitely an event that will be worth checking out. And, and for the record, I've, I've known for a while that there's a Toronto scene. But uh, but he's lying. he's lying to you guys. Yeah, I'm not lying <laughs> yes. Because the Smash <laughs> Wrestling thing was 2019. Remember? That's true. That was OWE and Smash Wrestling. Oh, Smash. Yeah, you're right. That was Smash. You're right. Okay. It was Smash Wrestling. Yeah, we even got to see Speed uh, Mike Speedball Bailey. Oh, yes, who's uh, who's uh, making quite an impact in uh, pro wrestling gorilla these days? But yep. anywho, plus, hey, I'm old enough to remember Maple Leaf wrestling, <laughs> which is some of the first wrestling I ever watched on TV. So, <laughs> anyway, onwards and upwards. Uh, in other news related to some returns that will uh, segue nicely into Krishna's AEW roundup this week, we have. Uh, Kanosuke Takeshita finally returning to AEW TV on November the 18th, and he's cha- tagging with Jun Akiyama. Who is Jun Akiyama, you might ask? Are you going to ask that question? Do you want to know? I'm definitely, Jun- I don't know who Jun Akiyama is. He's older than me. Oh, wow. I know. He's 53 years old. Um, the main part of his wrestling. wrestling... With, 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 with like the 20 something uh, Kanosuke yes. Takeshita. Okay. Takeshita. That's okay. correct. Um, the main part of his wrestling career, which began in 92, was spent in all Japan, where he was also the president for a while. And so he's, he's had a pretty story titled history. He joined DDT in 2020. He just let his All Japan contract expire at that point mm-hmm. and stayed with DDT. So that's where he's been wrestling now. But he's been in wrestling since 1992. So he's a you know, 30-year vet in the sport now. And he's teaming up with, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, up-and-comer, pretty young guy in Kanosuke Takeshita. So uh, should mm-hmm. be a good match. Who are they facing on, uh, on that rampage? I can't uh... remember. That's a good question. You can you continue. I, I can tell you who they're facing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm the sure I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Siri had no idea what was going on either. Siri Somehow I activated it. Anyway, the uh, yeah. So that match will be coming up on on Rampage, and uh, I believe that will be November the 18th. So that's this Friday. Um, right. So uh, Krishna, do you want to give us a rundown of AEW from the past week? Rampage, Dark, Dark Elevation. Was there anything on any of those shows worth watching? Yeah. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to start by saying, you know, uh, Dark and Dark Elevation are just it's a good time to like, you know, and, and a good place to kind of uh, obviously promote the young talent that we have at AEW. You get to see a lot of people because, for example, the varsity blonde. So I think they're calling themselves the blondes this, uh, right now. Well, yeah, they don't they have wrestled. the trademark diversity anymore, right? right? Yeah, exactly. So th- they fought this week on um, on dark, um, and you know what? It wasn't a bad match. Um, it was it was good to it's good to see them because I you forget how good Pillman and Garrison actually are. So it was they had a good match. And listen, you're not gonna like this very much, but the the gun club actually fought as well on on, uh, on dark they mm-hmm. came out so first of all they <laughs> shout out to the the gun club because they do make me laugh sometimes i heard fdr's music hit i'm like oh my god fdr's coming out oh no and the gun the gun club came out dressed dressed <laughs> as fdr and they had like cardboard belts that they taped around <laughs> themselves there's Man. such a bunch of there's such a bunch of fools but they came out with um with uh W Morrissey. They won mm-hmm. the they won the match because they, they had faced off against these two like, you know, I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. want to say no name, but these two like indie wrestlers. Um they, uh, at one point Taz called <laughs> it's called uh W Morrissey uh Big Bill. Big Bill <laughs> I was like, what? And I realized, Big oh, Bill. yeah, well, uh, because uh, W for Will. I'm like, okay, I see. I see what that mm-hmm. is going there. And, and of course, Excalibur was like, what? What did you just call him? But 
overall, I mean, if you have some, if you have time to spare, then obviously check out, always check out AW Elevation and Rampage. Cause as we know, last week's Dynamite, and we talked about this, wasn't the best Dynamite, right? Yeah, it was like, kind of um, mid. It was mid. It was very mid. Um, uh, I would say that if you had a choice between Dynamite and Rampage right away, I, I would probably say go check out Rampage. Go check out Rampage. Right. So, because, so well, why? Why? Well, why I'll should I you, check I'll out you, Rampage? I'll tell you. First off, first off, first off, I I, I kind of skimmed over um a dark. But if you want like a funny match, you can check out uh Brandon Cutler versus Peter Avalon. They're oh, having yeah, that. I, I saw that match, of course, because I had to watch my boy Brandon Cutler. Yeah, they're having you know Cutler has the perfect like I love his his gimmick. I know some people hate it. I just love it because he plays it perfectly. Like his little spin move where he, he spins Avalon around, around and they both go for their big punch and they miss and they fall oh, yeah, out the of the airplane like, spin where yeah. he was doing there like, and they both get out of it and he stumbles out of the <laughs> ring. Avalon tries to hit him and misses completely. They're both it's, down. It's ridiculous. It's It, it was funny. I'll, and also, I, 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 I highly heard last week as well, but um, Athena has this new gimmick that she has. I shouldn't say gimmick. Mm-hmm. She has this new persona where it's like his hard hitting uh, persona. So, so her versus Diamante. And I, I thought to myself, you know, I know why Tony Khan's not putting this on TV. Because if you put this, if you put a um, Athena versus a Diamante on Dynamite, mm-hmm. guess what's going to overshadow? Your actual women's champion. <laughs> That's what's going to overshadow. So I, Tony, I, I get it. I totally get it. But you're wasting Athena now on uh, Dark. Like, what is she doing? Mm-hmm. What's her storyline? So Nope. You know, guys, come on, man. You have wrestlers here. I think her storyline is she's getting angry and frustrated. She is. And her, she, hey, did you see her match co- against Abby Jane out. on uh, Dark yes. Elevation? Oh my yeah. God, when she snapped and just beat the hell but, out of Abby that's Jane. But that's what, that's and then I mean, she like, was mocking the ref. That yeah. was like, that was so funny. She's like, the ref's trying to counter her and she's like, seven, eight. <laughs> yep. That, but that's it, right? Like, that's her persona. I'm liking this kind of like heel ish. Yeah, uh, Athena, right? I've never seen like, her play like this before. No. It's great, but and 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 that came out in Toronto. Apparently, so that's when it first started. So hey, Toronto, that's right. Um, so yeah, so Downtown go, I would Toronto say those... can make me angry too. Don't worry, people. <laughs> so so that's say so jumping over quickly to Dynamite as we talked earlier last week, the best match was the main event, the two out of three falls, Danielson versus um versus uh, what's my first name? Uh, Guevara, yeah, Sammy, Sammy. <laughs> Sammy um yeah so so that was good um you know just ch- if you can check it out last but not least rampage rampage for i recommend you checking out because rampage yeah it has some ups and downs right yeah. but roosh versus bandito and cage versus martin mm-hmm. two different style of matches but still both my my style of matches right yeah um roosh and bandito like i mean this was this is obvious you know i knew this was going to be a a great match, high flying, and you know what? What I learned about this is that these guys had a I'm gonna quote here botches, a few, but they corrected it. There was this one move where Roos tried to do a I, I want to say it's like a uh, what is it called uh, the the kind of uh, the drop kick from the top rope that Danielson does uh, the the um, missile drop kick missile. He tried it, but I think he almost missed it. And yeah. he kind of corrected himself in the air, but still hit with one of his legs. And I was like, "Holy crap!" He connected yeah, that. that. that and the and the uh, the announcers like the kind of you can tell they're like, "What, what was that? That was a new move. <laughs> that, was Rouge, right? yeah. that was unique. That was <laughs> unique, and it, it was unique. I I totally agree. So like that match, I I, I obviously I enjoyed that match. And of course, the Brian Cage versus Dante Martin. Like first of all, back to the Rouge for one quick second. The ending shocked me in that match. I didn't I didn't see the winner coming out of that. I'm like, wait, did I call this? I didn't think. I don't think I did. I called the Brian Cage versus Dante Martin match though, um, with with uh, da- with Dante just again just defying physics altogether, um, and Brian Cage just like AEW has some monsters like legit monsters who could move, and Brian Cage is like I, if you're talking about the, a big guy who moves like a friggin' like like a lightweight, Brian yep. Cage is number one. He's number yep. one. Like there's, there's no one else that even challenges him for that. So. If if you take what I just said there about Brian Cage and you know anything about our boy Dante Martin, you will understand how how crazy this match is. Yeah. Um. Um. And uh, yeah, I I fully these those are the reasons you should check out AW Dark or Elevate and Elevation all the way over to Rampage. But yep. 
again, if, you, if I was going to recommend one show this week, I would have said, unfortunately, Rampage over okay. Dynamite easily. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would tend to agree with you. I saw those matches too, and mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you some of my thoughts on them because you, you cool. picked some great matches. Yeah, um, Dante Martin at the beginning of the match, the commentators pointed out that Dante Martin has the second most wins in 2022 behind John Moxley in the entire company. Company. Yep, I heard that too. The whole company. He's the workhorse of the year in this company. I mean, look at the matches this guy puts on week in and week out, right? I mean, his his rope jump leap to the outside is absolutely insane. His frog splash looks amazing. He showed a lot of toughness in this match too. It's yeah. just, I mean, yeah. he was so good. And did you see his match against um, Eli Isom? Eli Isom. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yep. Oh, another, another just phenomenal Dante Martin match, right? And I mean, Isom is great too, right? I mean, when he reverts that half and half into an air raid crash, it was just nuts. So, do you remember last week when I was giving my rundown of matches? I said to you, I had to choose Dante Martin matches because they all are just fantastic. Yeah. Right. That's the problem having is because he wrestles so much, which is great for us. Mm-hmm. But every match, he like, it's, it's he's becoming one of those guys that's kind of like, when has Danielson have had a bad match? When yeah. has, Covera. Now it's when has 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 Dante Martin ever had a bad match, right? No, exactly. So exactly. Yeah, and and exactly. He's just so good. Like he's he's our kind of guy. Like if we're gonna yep. talk about elite wrestlers, Dante Martin, but Roosh yeah. and Bandito, they're both in that <laughs> oh list too. God. I mean, that match was insane. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, my, my comment I put, I put down Bandito won through a distraction roll up. I didn't yeah. love that finish, Same, same. but it was an awesome matchup. It was, a, and here's my exact notes, a little sloppy in spots, but still highly recommended because <laughs> yeah. it was okay. There's a couple other things I just wanted to point out that happened on thing this week. And I want your, mm-hmm. your reactions to sure. them. The sports entertainment spot of the week happened on rampage this week. Jake Hager trying to recruit Claudio Castagnoli to become a sports entertainer with him again. And then he finished his interview by turning to Renee and Jake Hager says, I like this hat. I you, almost died laughing. You know, I get it. They have to put things on, on rampage, right? Mm-hmm. But this is gold. How, how do you not have this on your main show? Like dynamite. We barely see Jake Hager on dynamite, barely ever see him on dynamite. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So why wouldn't you just have a segment? You have all these other garbage segments but you won't have Hager on there. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. I, I, you want to build up Rampage, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Sports entertainment segment yes. of the week. <laughs> exactly. Um, Kip Sabian, cheeseburger is more over than Kip Sabian. Okay, I was going to ask you this, and I didn't know when to ask you this. Yep. When Kip Sabian's music hit, and I watched his, his him and his new gimmick, Listen, was Kip Sabian before his injury? He wrestled a, a bit differently, right? No, I thought so. Right, okay, okay, I always had so, an impression of him being better than he seems to be wrestling okay. now. It's, it, same, I'm with you on that one. That's why, like, ever since he's come back, I I was so happy when Kip Sabian announced he was coming. Well, not announced, but showed up and he's fighting Pac. But that match against Pac was mostly Pac, right? That we we loved about that match. Mm-hmm. And Kip Sabian, I remember. This is the guy that fought Kenny and stuff like that, and they had great matches. He was like a, a high flyer. I don't see him doing any of that stuff anymore. No, and I'm like, he doesn't. okay, it's weird because I'm not. I'm also not really enjoying Kip Sabian right now. So no, and I do enjoy Cheeseburger. <laughs> Tri- trivia note on Cheeseburger: okay, the very right. first entrance of the very first guy who ever came out to my very first live indie show. Was okay. cheeseburger oh yep. wow okay so every okay. time i see him i'm like man that's che- I, I love cheeseburger <laughs> i know that guy he's awesome i love cheeseburger so he'll, he'll always have a special place in my heart go cheeseburger <laughs> by the way the factory they're great they they, they can okay. wrestle i i don't get remember we talked we talked about this last week about i don't we don't give qt marshall marshall oh, yes, right. they, they were corrected that was so <laughs> funny his name is qt marshall <laughs> <laughs> But no, they're really good. Like you on you when you see him wrestle specifically and stuff like that, yeah. and the rest of them, it's so sound. You're right. Like mm-hmm. like this guy, I understand why he's a trainer. Yep. Like he knows his ins and outs of wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> right. So so yeah. No, I you're right. Like 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 and his matches are funny. He knows how to play the crowd. He knows how mm-hmm. to do everything. And I'm like, 
Yeah, I get it. He's like a he's like a mid card guy, like really really mid card guy. But you yeah. like like he's funny as hell. Like let him yeah. do the job on like the main t shows, and, right? And his guys can wrestle. His whole factory can wrestle. I mean, Cole, that's the uh, good Cole part. Cole Carter. What was no, that? Was he's a guy good. Who, yeah. Yeah. He's he's good, right? Yeah. 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 And Lee Johnson, taking on uh, taking on um, uh, Orange Cassidy. That was a pretty great match. <laughs> yes, it was. Yep. Anyway, so yeah, that uh, you have anything else you want to talk to us about this week for AEW? Uh no. Well, this is the go home week, right? So I mean. Yep. We've, oh, yeah. We're going to have a lot, a lot to talk about AEW wise coming up, right? So I'm, yep. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there that I may predict this week that the elite are 100% showing up on Wednesday, but I'm going to leave that guarantee till Wednesday. I, I'm going to guarantee the House of Black is 100% showing Ooh, up on Wednesday okay, so, after okay. that awesome video on Rampage. That was, and speaking of awesome videos, I that video. Now. Was better than the elite video by far. Better oh, than the elite big video. time! That, that, I watched that whole video going, "Oh my god, this is amazing! They're <laughs> building so... these guys up so well because they're looking at how they were taken out." That's what I loved about that video. The video basically goes through how each one of them was destroyed by someone else. You know, Sting takes down uh, Malachi Black. Malachi. Right? You see um, the Great Muta taking down. Um, uh, buddy, uh, uh, buddy, Matthews, right? buddy, yeah, Buddy Murphy. You yeah. took out Buddy, buddy Murphy, Murphy yeah. right? And yeah. then who who had taken out um, Brody uh, Brody Lee, Brody King? I don't remember. Was who it Darby? It might have been Darby. It has to be Darby. It has to yeah. Be Darby. yeah, but anyway, they all got taken out in the video, and it shows each one of them being led to like their grave, and then coming back to life. And they're talking about how they paid too much attention to their humanity in this kind of stuff. It was just so I, good. I think if if uh, AEW does nothing with this, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be very upset. Like, like right now, Malachi Black is literally saying, "Hair, hair is everything. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. take some of it, right?" Yeah. If they if they drop the ball with this one, like. I, I no. like my faith again. This is just. I don't think they will because I think this is this is Tony Khan going. I hear you, Malachi. Let's course correct. Speaking of uh, speaking of that, uh, Miro commented on something online um they someone some fan had done a, a clip of like miro and his best matches in AEW. um okay and, and um miro uh responded with hey remember that guy and and it's kind of like yeah I, I where are you like like what is happening with your character like what why did you sign an AEW? What is the purpose of this, right? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't understand. Like, yeah. Malachi wants to be here. You just don't want to be here. So why did you... Anyways, I'm tired of talking about, about Miro until he gets better. Again, yeah. he's not worth my time talking about. No, so. precisely. Exactly. You know what is worth our time talking about? Let's hear it. Uh, J Japanese wrestling. Because, you know, I'm, I'm on excursion. So That's right. you are this excursion. is... Bill's report from excursion. <laughs> Bill's report I'm going to start off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I'm going to start off with a very quick uh, New Japan Strong note because there was a very good match on New Japan Strong this week. I wouldn't say that it's going to be the kind of match that, and you know, you might have enjoyed this, but it's it doesn't have Lucha things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's, but I enjoy hard hitting matches okay. too. Minoru Suzuki taking on Fred uh, Yehi. Okay. And okay. Minoru Suzuki, you know, when he comes out in AEW, he's kind of like he's in a big crowd arena setting and he's pretty mm. serious. He had a total indie demeanor on during this match. He okay. was having fun. He was playing <laughs> oh, with the no. crowd. He was joking around, but he was still killing Fred. <laughs> I mean, this was so good. I mean, it really showed his personality. Right? He picked Yehi apart and it wasn't just like hard strikes and submissions, but like comedy spots playing to the audience. He did the whole like chair bit where like he brought a chair into the ring and the ref spent so much time getting the chair away from him so the ref's outside doing it. he grabs another chair while the ref's like outside smashes freddy with and then does the spot where he tosses the chair down the whole the you know the callback to eddie guerrero where he lies down in the ring now and pretends he was hit too and he's like holding his head yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yelling in pain <laughs> the ref comes in they're both down both claiming the other hit them with the chair and then you see like um you see uh, Suzuki behind the rose back. He looks up and he kind of winks and does his half face. And there's a couple of people in the audience are chanting, you sick 
right <laughs> oh it was so much fun like the match was just fun oh he did the spot that you know how they did like a lot of guys do the shh and then they chop a guy he did yeah. the sh spot but then forearmed him to the face and you heard it connect <laughs> oh, no. i was like oh my god that must have hurt but they he he, he beat yeah yeah he got some good spots i like this guy he's a good yeah. like i think he's an up-and-comer good young guy like big guy mm -hmm. and he's fast and he is strong right and it was it was good watching him against him like he got some good spots in against against uh, suzuki but i mean this was suzuki's match and he beat him with the you know the the just all of his signatures right he gets him in the uh, the rear naked choke right chops him down and then puts him into the gotch pile driver and just destroys him for the win That's so right. But yeah, if you're if you want to see something that's got hard hitting, but Minoru Suzuki doing some good comedy in front of a crowd that appreciates his both his hard hitting style and killing the guy, and you want to see a good young guy get a get a good match against yeah. Suzuki, right? Yeah. He even at the end he teased giving the gotch pile driver to the ref, like he got the ref <laughs> and was like, and he's like, ah. And when he was walking out and leaving the ring, he actually did like a nipple twister on like one oh, of the ref? young boy, like the oh, young guys the that young was like guys. helping him yeah. out. The guy's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty funny. Yeah, he was, he was clearly there and having a hell of a good time while he was doing this match. So, so Stardom had their November third show that came from Hiroshima. Um, it went up on Stardom World last week, which is why I'm only talking about it right now. But the whole show was excellent. I would recommend checking out at least the matches in this show, starting with the uh, Utami Hayashishita versus a uh, Natsuko Tora revenge match and onward. The revenge match was cool because, um, you know, U Utami uh, comes out with like a, a red rose and because uh, she's, of course, the leader of Queen's Quest. I love their factions in this. I, I, I just noticed, too, that like when they have their house shows and stuff, they have banners hanging for all the factions in the arena. Oh. I don't know why I hadn't noticed this before, but they actually have banners hanging. This, though, was like a full on. They had the whole ramp and stage instead of just being in a small gymnasium. So it was it was kind of cool. Um, anyway, the, the from that match onwards, that match had some good table spots in it. So, yeah, I would I would recommend watching that. No titles changed hands in the events, uh, but uh, Mayo Iwatani relinquished her SWA championship, which is like their their international championship. You cannot defend it against someone from the same country as you. So if you're right. Japanese and have the belt, you can't defend it against Japanese people. So she fought against Alpha Female, beat her, but at the end of the match, relinquished the belt anyway, because she wants to concentrate on the uh, IWGP title. Oh, yes. okay, okay. Yep. And uh, and then there were two matches in this. I mean, the 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 main event. I'll mention it quickly too. Like Siri maintained or kept her title uh, in a very good match. Um, that uh, wasn't quite going to be one of my elite matches. I'm recommending after the Suzuki match was one of them. And then I'm I'm recommending two matches out of this show that people should go out of their way to check out. The first one was Meltier, which is Tam Nakano and Natsupoi from uh, Queen's Quest taking on Momo Watanabe and Starlight Kid from Odeo Tai. Now, I like Tam Nakano and Natsupoi a lot, but their tag team, their entrance, for me, I'm like, they do this whole like choreographed, like singing, dramatic, <laughs> look at their tag team, it melts here, right? Like, so they do this whole like choreographed uh, Japanese version of like Indian you know, Bollywood stuff, except not quite with fast dancing. It's more just like dramatic and, <laughs> you, you know, picture like a Japanese slow song at the end of an anime or something and yep. people doing like a, a, a whole elaborate entrance to this. OK, so I'm like, man, and Odeo Tai is like the bullet club of stardom. So I'm watching okay. this match and I'm going, God, just once I want someone to interrupt this entrance. Well, <laughs> As they were coming to the ring, Raka, who is a member of Odiotai, pulls the plug on the music. <laughs> and Momo Watanabe and the Starlight Kid go right after them and attack them before the bell, beating them down outside the ring. And I'm like, I love Odiotai right now. They are so good. And actually, they've been growing on me a lot because they're so funny with their just like obvious, obvious continuous cheating. 
So anyway, they they actually posed. They took the both of them at the announcer table and posed with them doing like their hand gestures and stuff with them in front of them. So it was, it was pretty hilarious. Momo throws Tam into a ring pose. Starlight Kid does a chair shot to Natsupoi's leg that would make Sammy proud. Um, and that <laughs> became the story of this match was like that Natsupoi's knee. And I mean, Starlight Kid and Momo Watanabe, they just worked this over. I mean, they dragged him in the ring, choked him down. Ref tries to restore order. They finally get the bell on. Natsupoi cannot run on this leg in the opening. She collapses on an Irish whip. Starlight Kid just worked it over. Natsupoi is screaming. So I'm sitting here thinking, so Meltier, this was, uh, by the way, for the Goddess of Stardom Tag Team Championship. So I'm thinking Meltier has to retain this. How the heck are they supposed to do that now? I mean, they've had the crap kicked out of them, right? So it was such a good start to the match because they're already fighting from underneath, right? And Momo puts uh, um, Natsupoi into a knee wrench. Like, just, it looked terrible. Natsupoi fired up at one point. Momo just casually kicks her leg out from under her. I mean, it was just like, okay, whatever kick yeah <laughs> um, melter would get some momentum but every time that support was in the rank a drop kick to the knee more than once and she was just screaming more knee targeting stretch mufflers all kinds of stuff uh, there was a, a Tam did a top rope jumping knee to Starlight Kid that was followed by Natsupoi with a moonsault, but the pin was interrupted when Ruaka, one of the other members, threw her plastic box into the ring, <laughs> hitting Natsupoi, and the ref just allowed this. It's like, okay, that's, that's fine, of pin's course. broken of off. Yeah. So while the ref gets distracted, though, with this, Momo takes her baseball bat. She Picture her as kind of a pain maker type character. Okay, okay, okay. A little bit, a okay. little bit. And she takes her baseball bat to mm-hmm. both of them. Now she hits them with this baseball bat. AW, can you please get Chris Jericho whatever this baseball bat is made out of? Because it. it sounds when it hits, you hear a crack, right? And she full on hits them, but it's got to be made out of something else because she's mm-hmm. not breaking their bones or anything. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, she's yeah. winding up and smashing them with this thing and it makes noise and it looks amazing, but clearly it's made out of something that's not actually hurting them or whether it's got like hollow sensors in it or something that makes a crack when it, but I don't know what the heck they do with this bat, but it's amazing. Those bat shots look wicked when she hits with it. Like she just winds up and nails them. Right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's so good. Right. So anyway, she takes the bat to both of them. Um, Starlight Kid goes for a slam, but Natsupoi fires up again, right? Mm-hmm. And then, um, so Starlight Kid reverses into a tombstone and then a moonsault, but that pin got interrupted. Natsupoi gets a series of great moves on Starlight Kid until, until Dragon screwed to her leg and a stretch muffler again. And oh my God, this it isn't just like, oh, she's holding her in it. She's in it. She was yeah. rolling around and writhing in pain on the ground, screaming with the stretch muffler on, like to the point where her rolling around was making it hard for Starlight Kid to keep it. She was like trying to roll to the ropes and stuff. It was such mm-hmm. a good spot. Um, there was finally a double team Escalera neckbreaker to Starlight Kid. Natsupoi finally hits the fairy strain, which is her bridging suplex for the three count for the win. So she managed to pull the win out near the end, but my God god right amazing match there were so many good moves in this match all four of these women were absolutely amazing not so boy is unbelievable i had ne- mm-hmm. i already knew tam and starlight kid were good but wow i mean the only criticism i'd have is there were occasions where i'm like how are you running on that knee right now when, yeah when it's yeah. injured yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah there was yeah. a few and i'm like okay like the you know japan they're, they're good with their fire up fighting spirit spots right mm-hmm. so okay mm-hmm. i get it but uh but yeah other than that highly recommended this match was like just so many good moves so many good double teams for the best women's wrestlers in the world in this ring well according to the pwi 150 <laughs> anyway which we already know is a problem for me but anyway yes yeah, so uh yeah no i would highly recommend this match it was a lot of fun okay. um the second match I'm going to talk about is Saya Kamitani uh, taking on uh, Mina Shirakawa for the Wonder of Stardom Championship. Now, as good as that last match was, this one was better. Ooh. Saya came out fast. Mina grounds. And Mina, by the way, has never had a really what I would call apparently stellar match. I mean, um, Meltzer called this match one of the best showings she's had and has shown her massive improvement over the last year. So, and I don't disagree with him. I mean, I would never have thought Mina, you know, this was like, she wasn't one of the top wrestlers in the world watching this, right? Um, So she, uh, Saya comes out fast, but Mina grounds her with a knee drop on the apron. Like she just takes her knee and smashes it down on the apron, followed by she tears up the mat outside and slams her knee into the wood twice. So guess what story we're getting in this match too? 
the knee. Well, <laughs> Saya's knee is a mess, and uh, Mina Mina drop kicks. At one point, Mina drop kicked her out of the air. Like Saya was going through the air, she did a drop kick and hit the knee perfectly. Like, it was oh, just wow. nuts. Okay. Yeah, it was it was so good. And when Saya does get moves off, they usually end up with her grabbing her own knee. So like that's the story. She's working through this knee pain a lot like Natsupoi was, but she's unable to capitalize when she does hit moves, right? Mina worked her ass off in this match, right? I mean, she just worked, um, just move after move. Avalanche DDT and a brain buster for a near fall. She got multiple figure fours on uh, Saya. You know, Saya crawled for the ropes and won, and then uh, Mina pulled her back and bridges. The look of pain on Saya's face during that was unreal. Like, she just looked like she like she was hemorrhaging or something, right? Oh, it's like, these goodness. women know how to sell. That's, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She finally managed to get to the rope, but she just she's just a heap on the mat holding her knee after she does get to the rope, right? The end comes when Saya finally hits a Michinoku driver and she goes to the top rope. Okay. And this is after like a good, I think this match was like 30 minutes long. So we're getting close to the 30 minute mark of them like going back and forth and stuff. So mm. she goes for her Phoenix splash finisher. And unfortunately for this match, which this match was going on to be like just absolutely insanely incredible. She missed the 450. Oh, no. Yep. So she climbed the rope again to do it again. And her boot connects directly with Mina Shirakawa's mouth. Oh. Um, you can see that there was an instant problem. The ref came over and looked. Mina's holding like something over her mouth. Yeah. Of course, if I hold something over my mouth right now, it doesn't do well for the sound on a podcast. So I'll try not to do <laughs> that again. But yeah, she's holding over her mouth. She, they count three. Okay. The ref actually makes the three count, but um, Mina had lifted her shoulder at two because I think the spot was she was supposed to kick out of that Phoenix splash and the match was supposed to keep going, but the ref called the stop and counted oh, the three okay. out okay. because of the injury to Mina, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So they actually yeah. ended the match there. Um, she actually did take a legitimate, very hard shot to the mouth. Her teeth were a bloody mess on the front bottom part of her jaw. Um, it's just one of those unfortunate things that happens during wrestling yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah. you know saya has hit that phoenix splash perfectly multiple multiple times it's just a complete and utter fluke you, you could see mina did not look mad in the slightest right she like it was yeah it was a mistake yeah yeah um yeah. saya cut a promo while mina was still in the ring and then she asked her you know if you, her hope for this belt has disappeared and mina actually responded so she cut a promo with her <laughs> with her mouth like that oh. she goes i can taste bloody despair <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. okay. she goes my teeth and my hopes were taken but the fire will never go out and i will crawl out of this hell and it's during that promo while she's talking you can see her teeth oh I'm like oh my god no, <laughs> she needs a you. lot of dental work yep. but anyway it was it was an unfortunate part so i just say you know i'm gonna i defended this for the 10th time you know i'm gonna continue to defend it and uh she's gonna defend it again in osaka on 19th and she called out Kyrie sane to defend against that belt on the 19th at their next pay-per-view um Anyway, Waka Sukiyami has now replaced Mina in the tag team in the Goddess Tag League going forward because clearly Mina will be out a bit getting her <laughs> teeth, teeth fixed. Yeah, it's it was an unfortunate ending to an absolutely phenomenal. Like, let me put you this way: um, Meltzer still gave this match four stars and put the comment in that it was going to be a lot more than this, but for the ending. Yeah, for the ending. I yeah, can a hundred percent agree with that. This match was incredible. <laughs> Like, what a showing by Mina in this match, even up to, unfortunately, losing her teeth in her bloody teeth. despair, right? Um, but what a Sounds trooper. Painful. What an absolute, like, she cut a promo sitting there with, a, like, a mouthful of broken teeth. So, you know, good on her, and she's taking the time now to go and recover. I can't wait to see her back. Um, what a great match, and, uh, yeah. But, but and... Bill, isn't, isn't wrestling fake, though? How is this possible? <laughs> I know, right? Well, I mean, yeah, it is. It's scripted scripted anyway um that is my match of the week nice nice. yeah because nice. even with that finish the match yeah. leading up to that point the unfortunate part the way it was even though the way it was handled mm -hmm. i appreciated the fact the ref stopped the match Und you know so yeah. for me this is worth it this match is worth to go out and see in spite of the fact you get to watch mina take a boot to the face and get her teeth literally knocked out so my yeah. match of the week that uh you know and, and that sounds like 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 you know that makes sense that's that's your match of the week right because mm. you know it, as as you put down Meltzer said four but it could have been higher just based on but unfortunately the the ending yeah that's that's where because like even 
I, I guess uh, my match of the week, you're right, is, is similar to yours, right? Because my mm-hmm. match of the week is still going to be the best two out of three falls. And you're right, what, what, and one thing you had pointed out was, you know, the chair shot really took you out of it, right? Yeah. And, and and to me, it's like, you know, I I look past the chair shot, but but I had a really good time with that. And you're right. Had the chair shot been more, I guess, you know, managed properly, I should say, mm-hmm. um, and not thrown at uh, Dan, uh, Brian Danielson's head, um, it probably would have gotten a lot higher in a lot of people's. Because, because again, Danielson, Guevara, they're just, they're fantastic. And and I'm glad what AEW is doing here. They're pushing the young guys with the older guys. Yeah. Um, and it was a great match. Like, this is what they're third match now this is a third match they've had? yeah something like that yeah right? second second recently i think they're third yeah. overall am i third wrong overall, i don't yeah. know so, yeah we'd have to so check. these guys like i mean they could they can go and I, I you know me i love sammy Guevara. We, i've loved him ever since we've seen him um at owe right he's mm-hmm. so good um and brian danielson like hey there's no award named after him so so yeah, yeah that that that's that's my match of, of the week yeah it just like I, I was looking at my list and and i was looking at all the matches and stuff like that but i said you know overall Yes, Dynamite wasn't the greatest, mm-hmm. but this was the only saving grace of that entire show, right? So yeah, and it was it was a great match. Don't get me wrong. Right. And apparently, you know, I was listening to all the other reviews of this match, and apparently, I just have problems with chairs because no, <laughs> no one else, else mentioned no one this else chair was up. a problem. No <laughs> one, you know. Oh, he got his hand up. Blah blah. I mean, I watched it twice. I'm like, he did not get his hand up. That chair looked like it hit him right in the face. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. but apparently, I'm the only one that cares that Brian Danielson <laughs> got a chair wing at his face. Uh, everyone else, maybe like, you're just cool, sensitive. You're, you're like Vince McMahon when it comes to Brian Danielson. You want to protect him, Bill. I do want, want to, to protect him. In a bubble. him. I do want to put him in a bubble. He's Brian Danielson. Damn it. I want him to wrestle forever. Um, oh, by the way, just a quick aside that we didn't mention during the Brandon Cutler and Peter Avalon match. Mm-hmm. The fight forever chance that we're yes, breaking out. The, the, the audience. Yeah. The <laughs> audience fight forever. I loved it. I, you know why? Because, okay. Yes. Wrestling can be serious. We said this wrestling for everybody. Mm-hmm. This was a comedy match. And it was just so much fun. It was yep. so much fun. I was, was having a good time. I was laughing. So yeah, I would agree. Fight forever. They're yeah, exactly. so ridiculous. They, even the announcers were getting into the comedy. So yeah, it was just so good. But anyway, but, sorry, but, but, I, I, I digress. Have, but why wouldn't you have like a match like that on the main card? Yeah. I don't know, because it's a hell of a lot of fun, right? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing it's... wrong with having a good comedy match, breaking up other... Because you know what? It's a good like breather. That's the kind of yeah. match you could put in a show. To break up two serious matches. Palette sensor, yeah. Palette yeah. sensor. Just, just like throw it in. Like let the crowd like have some fun, laugh a bit, mm-hmm. and then you can get back to you whatever seriousness you need to get back to, right? right. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I completely agree with you. And I also agree with your choice of match of the week because that was a very solid. I was close to picking that one. That no, one's right no. up there, right? It was a good match. Right up there. And it, it wasn't until I watched that uh, the rest of that pay-per-view event in the week that I was like, mm, okay, that match is better. <laughs> yes. So that brings us to our wrestlers of the week. And who did you pick this week? You know, you know, I could have gone, taken the easy route and chosen like, um, you know, I had chosen Sammy last week. Was last week, yeah, Sammy. Um, I can Danielson because he's he's like the obvious easy choice. But for me, this week, um, the rest of the week, because again, I, I I thought back to it and and I thought back last week and I, when I said, you know, I had to choose a Dante Martin match this week as well i had to choose a dante martin match right so i'm sorry like i like this is long overdue i'm gonna give wrestler of the week to dante martin because he he's he's always been great we've always loved this guy um his his brother returns on wednesday they're gonna have it's he's part of top flight and um and ar fox they're gonna be taking on um obviously death triangle i can't wait for that match it's gonna be pretty amazing (laughs) Yep. <laughs> that that right now i'm pretty sure we can just say that's in the match of the night but anyways um but yeah dante martin long overdue he uh my wrestler of the week yeah and th- what what a great choice i mean workhorse of aew yeah. for 2022 Definitely. right i mean Definitely. when i heard that stat i was just like second most wins to john well, moxley well do you remember when like uh jungle boy had that stat as well like he yeah. he was like he had the most wins because he was wrestling everywhere mm-hmm. so i guess you know jungle boy has some time off now and obviously he's he has his little thing going on with uh K- christian cage and uh i, I need to specifically say who i'm talking about cage wise because there's christian cage brian cage right so uh, uh, he, uh jungle boy is taking some time off obviously um yeah. But yeah, just I'm I'm glad I'm glad and and AEW needs to promote that those stats 
more often. Remember, wins and losses matter, right? Which well, no, they've, they've ditched aside. the rankings. Yeah, they haven't they even totally updated them it. since August yeah, or something. Yeah. So it's kind of like, yeah, maybe you need to start reminding like the, everyone who has these these like not not records, but like yeah, if John Moxley has most wins. You're second. Is it MGF? Yep. Nope. It's no. not. Is it Kenny? Nope. Well, MGF it's never Dr. wrestles. Martin. How's he yeah. supposed to get like uh, re- any kind of anything? The dude like wrestles three times a year. Well, I hope that changes and we can talk about that after this weekend. Yes. When, when, my, when my prediction is he's winning, but I know and my prediction winning. is he's not, but you mm-hmm. know, we can talk about that. Oh, no, we will talk about that more in our prediction but, show. Yes. But I hope that changes because then what is he? Brock Lesnar? He's a part time wrestler, right? Like, yeah. Hey, you know what? Rowan Reigns had cancer, so there's a reason why this guy is a part-time wrestler. <laughs> MGF, I'm not, I'm not saying you don't have any issues, in, but listen, I like my wrestlers like Kenny Omega when he held the belt. He wrestled almost every single week, and if you if you think I'm lying, go look up the amount of matches he wrestled as a champion. Right, so. exactly, and guys like Will Ospreay who wrestled their asses off all year. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, <laughs> my wrestler of the year. Wrestler of the year, my wrestler of the week. I don't think she's going to make wrestler of the year, but my wrestler of the week. Look, I almost went with Brian Danielson myself mm-hmm. again. Gave it to him last week. I almost mm-hmm. gave it to him second week in a row. Ooh. But I've got to give it to Mina Shirakawa. Okay. Because okay. in that match, first of all, to wrestle the way she did, like really stepping up and putting on like main event caliber performance, mm-hmm. move after move, just wrestled almost flawlessly for that whole match, right? Mm-hmm. phenomenal performance probably could have been darn close to a five-star match if that ending mm-hmm. hadn't gone then to take that boot to her teeth and still cut a promo right? and she was willing to keep fighting like kicked out of that pin i mean i'm glad the ref stopped it but talk about showing fighting spirit right That's like right like there man good That's... good on her for yeah. trying and good on the ref for making the right call but Honestly, that showing in that match, like we already knew that Saya Kamatani is amazing, right? Top mm-hmm. 10 on the PWI 150. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but Mina Shirakawa, nowhere near there. Mm-hmm. And um, just phenomenal, phenomenal showing. Everyone should go try to find that match on Stardom World if they can or by other means that I don't recommend. Um, but, you know great match and what a great showing i enjoyed her match so much i am a mina shirakawa fan now i can't wait for her to come back after she gets her teeth fixed good on you look forward to seeing more from her that is my wrestling good pick pick. good pick there yep so that about brings us to the end of today's show and we've got a lot of shows coming this week Mm -hmm. we've got Wednesday, we've got our Dynamite uh, prediction and review show as usual. Later in the week, we're going to have our prediction show for this weekend's two events, Smash Wrestling, Mm -hmm. where we'll talk a bit about the matches and the wrestlers, let you guys know what's going on. And of course, AEW Full Gear. We will give you our full thoughts. Maybe we'll wear full gear while we're doing the podcast. (laughs) Full gear, full gear, really, guys? Really, really? (laughs) Oh. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I know it's it's funny like years from now AEW fans that are new to the product will wonder why their pay-per-view is called Full Gear and they'll have to and, show uh, them just just as a teaser guys I just want to uh, make one quick comment that we all will come that I'll talk about in Friday but uh, remember the AEW injury list is very lengthy still I'm just saying it's been a while since other people have been out of wrestling as well. So, you know, we have been laid up, but that's uh, the House of Black and uh, Omega and the Bucks are returning. I don't think that's the only return we're going to be getting this weekend, but I'm going to save that. I'm going to yes, save yes, that until yes. Friday. Interesting, interesting. Yep. And then, uh, you know, we've got the we got the events that we're going to be reviewing uh, from Saturday, the, uh, the Smash show. We're going to do a review of that, and we're also going to do a review of Full Gear. And, you know, time permitting, uh, we may even get a the New Japan Stardom crossover because it's happening on the 20th. This is a week of wrestling, wrestling, people. There is so much epic stuff going on. I can't wait to get into more of it. But for now, as the great one always says, goodbye, everybody, and good night. Bang. Good night, everyone.